sermon to share with you today is called The One Thing Needed. The One Thing Needed. And if I would ask you, what do you think is the most important thing? What is the one thing that is needed? Okay, I believe if I would ask you, we would have a lot of different opinions this morning, wouldn't we? But I believe that the Bible tells us what is the one thing. Okay, we're going we're gonna to look at that this morning. How many of you read the Bible every single day? Okay. This is like one of those introspection questions. Okay, so how many of you read the Bible every day? How many of you read the Bible once a week? How many of you read the Bible once a month? How many of you read the Bible once a year? How many of you never read the Bible? Okay, so interestingly enough, Bono Group actually did some research. Now, if you know Bono Group, Bono Group does actually do a lot of uh, statistical research in churches and the world about the church, about the Bible, and all sorts of things like that. And they actually made this discovery about the Greeks, you can say, sure. So that's it's not South Africans, but I actually believe there might be some similarities. So, one of the things that they discovered is that according to Bible engagement, they discovered that 29% of Americans never read Bible. 30% read it once or twice a year. 8% only read it twice a year. 8% read it four times a year. Another 8% can read it once a month. 9% read it once a week. 9% read it once a week. And 9% also read it two to three times a week. 5% read it four to six times a week. And 11% only of Americans read it daily. So if you compare that to the screen test statistics of, of, of people, Okay, how much time they spent in front of digital devices, how much time they spent in front of TV. They say that the average person spends around 147 minutes per day, per day, in front of a screen. Okay, now, they even say that children, 13 to 18, are currently spending 7.5 hours a day in front of a television screen or a phone screen or some sort of digital device. Now, if you think about that, most of us work how many hours a day? Eight hours a day. So I think it's like becoming their job or something to spend so much time in front of a screen. But what they don't realize is that there's been negative uh, effects linked to spending time in front of digital devices. You know, one of them that they found is that it causes lack of sleep. They say if you watch a television screen or a phone screen before you go to bed, it actually causes that your brain releases release melatonin. Melatonin is what regulates your day and night. And um, that's why if you go on a trip somewhere and, you know, you, you have jet lag, it's because of that lack of melatonin. Your body needs to adjust to the sun. So because of that light, it causes that, that melatonin in your brain and it causes you to actually not sleep well. And we all know what sleeplessness, sleep, if you can't sleep, what effects it has on your body. Um, not only that, they actually say that it can cause headaches, it can cause dryness, blurred vision, long-term screen time actually say they can cause anxiety. It can cause depression. And even lower, lower levels of self-aware, of, of social awareness. Okay, and I don't have to tell you that. People that spend time in, in front of screens don't spend time with people. Okay, so I want to ask you this morning, and I'm speaking to myself as well. Where do we fit in this statistic? Screen time? Bible time. Now, I'm not here to make you feel guilty this morning, but do we realize that this life is temporary? You know, they say most people, the average person, now you're not average, I believe you're going to live till 100, but the average person lives to about 78.6 years, okay? And 
if I would take a rope this morning and I would take that rope and I would say to you, this life is like uh, the beginning of the rope, the end of the rope. Okay, it's 78.6 years and the rest of the rope would go around this church 10 times or whatever. That actually represents eternity. You see, we spend so much time in the things of this life compared to eternity. And the Bible is one of those things. The Bible prepares us for eternity. And I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems that a lot of people know more about the Kardashians than they know about Jesus. Okay, have you seen that? They spend times on things in this life that are, has got nothing worth in eternity. And yet we spend so much time on that. Now to just get you the perspective on that, it's like if I would ask you to go on a new diet, and I would say to you this morning, you know, from now on, just Sundays, you just have a small light meal. Okay, nothing, nothing big, just one meal on Sundays. The rest of the week, you don't eat anything. How many of you think you would starve? You probably would. Yet that is what we do with our spiritual lives. You know, we don't feed our spirits, but we feed our body. We feed our soul. We feed our mind. We feed our emotions. And we spend so much time in all these things, but we don't read the Bible. So, this is something that I heard this week that actually this statement made such a big impact on me. And it said this, the less we read God's word, the quieter our spirit becomes. Did you hear that this morning? Let me repeat that. The less we read God's word, the quieter our spirit becomes. Do we realize that sometimes we are starving our spirits? So, the question I want to ask this morning is, why don't we read the Bible? Why don't we read the Bible? Well, actually, another research that they did was from the Center of Bible Engagement, and they did research, and they also made another amazing discovery about people who actually do read their Bibles. And maybe you've heard of this, but they found that when people read their Bible once a week, nothing much happens. Okay, and that includes the pastor telling you, open up your Bible in church. Okay, because that's sometimes the only time that people open up their Bibles is on church on a Sunday, if they have their Bibles at church. Um, and then they actually say, even if people open up their Bibles twice a week, and that could include at a cell group or something like that, it doesn't have a big significant impact. But then they found that all of a sudden, after three times a week, if you start to open up your Bible, something happens. Okay, they say it's like a heartbeat starts to, something starts to happen. But then they found that significant things start to happen when people open up their Bibles four times a week. Just by four times a week, and listen, this is the things that they found. And I, you know, it's quite amazing actually. They said they found that loneliness drops by 30%. Anger... How many people are struggling with anger these days? Anger drops by 32%. Bitterness in relationships drops to by 40%. Alcoholism, listen to this, alcoholism, addiction, drops 57%. Sex outside of marriage drops to 68%. Feeling spiritually stagnant drops 60%. You know, how many people, if you talk to them, they feel like my spiritual life isn't going anywhere. They feel, but then you ask them, are you reading your Bible? You see, feeling spiritually stagnant drops by 60%. Viewing pornography drops 61%. Sharing your faith, listen to this, jumps 200%. Isn't it amazing? The more you start spending time in the, in the Word, all of a sudden then you want to start sharing your faith. And then it says, discipling others jumps 230%. You see, the more time we spend in the Word, the more positive impacts it actually has in our lives. And this is exactly what I was saying this morning. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 55 verse 11 that God's Word does not return void. 
And now there's even scientific proof that proves what God's word already said. And this is not the only result that they discovered. There's many more, but I believe there's even some that we don't even know about. You know, by just reading your Bible. You know, there's, there's been many people um, in history who have read the Bible consistently and it had a big impact on their life, on their health, and on their faith. You know, the Bible says, Romans 10 verse 17, it says, faith comes by hearing. hearing. But we stop there sometimes. It doesn't just come by hearing. It comes by hearing the Word. It comes by hearing the Word. You see, the Word brings faith. Now, was the, there was this man called George Mueller. Now, maybe you've heard of George Mueller, but he was a great man of God, and he had a lot of faith. You know, they say that he actually ran... Um, uh, what do you call it, a, a child, um, now I forgot the word, an orphanage. He ran an orphanage, and at the orphanage, you know, sometimes they didn't even have food. And they would sit at the table, and he would say to all the children, come sit around the table, God is going to, we, we are going to have food now. And then they didn't have anything. And they would sit there, and they would pray, and they would thank God for the food. And immediately after they've prayed, then all of a sudden, someone knocked at the door and they brought the food for dinner. That was the faith that he had. But he was a man of the word. He spent time in the word. You see, so many times we want faith, but we don't realize faith comes by hearing the word. See, faith comes from the word. So, and they even say with his health, his health was so good that at the end of his of his, when he died, they discovered that his body didn't even look like that of a, I think he died at 89 or something like that, but he, they didn't even find his body um, to look like 89 years old, it looked like a 20 year old. Okay, the word has longevity, it brings longevity to our lives, it brings health, it brings healing, and there's so many benefits to study the word of God. So once again, why don't we spend time in the Bible? You know, one of the biggest excuses we have a lot of times is that we don't have time. But I showed you how much time people spend on digital devices. Okay, but that's not the only thing. Do you know how much time it would actually take you to read the Bible? Did you know that if you used a slow reading speed of about 100 words per minute, okay, which is considered a, a slow reading speed, they actually say that it will take you... Um, to read almost half of the books in the Bible would actually only take you two and a half hours. Half of the books in the Bible we can read in less than two and a half hours. Okay? It's also, they actually say that you can read most of the books in under 20 minutes. Now that's less time than a, a Netflix show. Can you all know that people do binge watching? They don't just watch one episode, they watch about seven. Okay? But... It takes you less than 20 minutes to read through one book of the Bible. So we can't use that excuse to say we don't have time. We just need to prioritize what is important. We just need to prioritize what God says is important and what is eternity based and not just focusing on this life. So I want to tell you what Jesus said about this. I asked you what is the most important thing. Listen to what Jesus said, Luke 10, verse 38 to 42. He said, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted. Doesn't that sound like a lot of people today? We are distracted. With much serving, she was distracted by serving, we might be distracted by other things. And she approached him and she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. Verse 41. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her and I want us to focus on Luke 10 verse 42 it says but one thing is needed and Mary has chosen the good part which will not be taken away from her and Jesus said one thing one thing is needed now let me ask you 
if the King of Kings, if the Lord of Lords, if the Most High God says to you, one thing is needed, don't you think we should pay attention? Okay, and listen to what he said is the one thing. Luke 10 verse 39, he said, And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. What was the one thing needed? To sit at Jesus' feet and hear his word. Now doesn't that run contrary to everything that we think we should do? Okay, there's so many things that we think is priority, that we think is important. But Jesus said one thing, one thing, sit at Jesus' feet and hear his word. So do we really believe that this one thing is the only thing that is needed? So today I want to talk to you about how to do this practically. Because a lot of, of times people sometimes they don't know how to to do this, okay, and I believe to do it practically, we need some soap, okay, we need to clean up our lives, okay, and to clean up our lives and to get our act together, we need some soap, say to the person next to you, soap, say to you need some soap, okay, and you're not telling them they don't smell nice, okay, but they need some soap, okay, so I'm going to tell you what soap is. So as children of God, we are instructed to study the Word of God. We're instructed to study the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. Study. We are commanded to study the Word. Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, don't just read the Bible. Study the Bible. So that you can be approved by God. So that you can rightly discern the Word of God. You see, we need to discern the Word of God. There's so much error out there. People are going all sorts of directions. They're ending up in error. They are ending up in places where they shouldn't end up because they don't know God's Word. You know, Pastor Green also always says, Hosea 4 verse 6, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. See, it's because they don't know the Word of God that they end up in error. So, how do you study your Bible? Okay, so today I want to show you a way that God can speak personally to you to, through the Bible every time you read it. Because listen, God's word is personally to you. It's God's love letter to you. It is God telling you, if you read the pages of that book and you understand what it's trying to say, it's God's love letter to you. Now if someone wrote you a love letter, I think you need to read it. Okay, and God wants you to read it, and to do that you need this soap method that I'm going to share. Now, this is not the only way of Bible study. This is actually just one, and it's an easy one to remember. That's why I like sharing it, but there's many other ways that you can study the Bible. But I want us to sit at Jesus' feet, and I want us to hear His Word. Okay, so soap, what does it stand for? Okay, and you can see there on the screen, it stands for, the S of soap stands for? Scripture, okay, the O stands for observation, observation, the A stands for application, and the P stands for prayer, okay, soap, okay, and you all know how soap works, okay, it's the same with the Bible, the Bible is also soap, the Bible says we are washed by the water of the Word. So just as the Word washes us, soap cleanses us, and that's why we can use this. So 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all Scripture, did you hear that? Not some Scripture, but all Scripture is God breathed, okay? God's breath, God's life is in His Word. And it is useful for teaching, okay, for rebuking. Okay, do you know sometimes we need rebuking? Okay, can you imagine if you never rebuke your children? Okay, what would happen? Okay, have you, maybe you found that, you know, that you don't, some people don't rebuke their children and then what happens? They end up worse. Okay, so rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness. Okay, all of these things, it's, it's what the Bible tells us. That's what scripture is for. It's training of all these things. So, I want to ask you this morning, do you have a Bible reading plan? You know, so many times people don't even have a plan to read the Bible. Now, what I found is that if you don't have a plan, 
failing to plan is planning to fail. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have an appointment every single day where you say, I'm going to read the Word of God, I'm going to spend time in the Word of God, guess what? You're not going to do it. Okay, so we need a plan. And if you don't need a plan, we'll on the YouTube channel, we'll have at the bottom of the link, we'll have a reading plan there for you that you can download. So you can just go on the YouTube channel and you can see, we'll see there's a link in the description that you can just download um, the reading plan. I'll ask Pastor Michael if we can also post it on the group, on the WhatsApp group. Okay, but you need a Bible reading plan. There's plans that you can read through the Bible in a year, two years, three years, in a month. Okay, there's actually plans where you can read through the Bible in a month. And every single day, if you read through a passage of Scripture, you can actually read through the Bible. So, do you have a Bible reading plan? Okay, and that's the first thing. So, then what I believe you need to do is that you need to, when you read your Bible, remember what are you reading. You're not just reading a book. Okay, you're reading the Word of God. And when we read the Word of God, we need to approach it the right way. Approach the Word of God with reverence. Approach it with, with honor. You see, the Word of God is God's Word. See it as an appointment with God where God can speak to you. So, to, to do that, the, uh, the first thing that you need, and I believe this is very important, is to get into a private place. You know, so many times we try to read the Bible, and, you know, let me say this. If you can't get into a private place, then read the Bible anyway. Even if you don't have a private place, it's better to read the Bible not in a private place than not to read the Bible. Because sometimes we use that as an excuse as well. But if you can, find a private place so that you can focus on God, so that you can spend time with God. And then you remove all distractions. Okay, and I think one of the biggest ones is sometimes is our cell phones. You know, if, you, if the phone peeps, then you want to look at your phone. Okay? Um, I guarantee you this. I promise you this. God is not going to send you a WhatsApp. Okay, so, so don't focus on the WhatsApp, don't focus on, you know, all the social media updates, focus on God, get rid of all the distractions, okay? And then what you do is, is that you ask Holy Spirit to speak to you through God's Word, okay? Did you know that He is the author of the Word? Okay, He is the author of the Word. The people wrote the Bible inspired by the Spirit of God. So who better to have with you when you're reading the Bible, studying the Bible, than the Spirit of God? Okay, so ask Him. And the Bible actually says that Jesus said if you would ask Him, He would show you things. John 16, 13. He said, so when He, the Spirit of truth comes, and He has already come, He will guide you into all truth. Okay, and listen, this is the thing about truth. John 17, 17. And Pastor Michael and Pastor Steph has preached about this. Holiness, sanctification, making seriousness with the Word of God. It says, John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your Word. Your Word is truth. You see, God sanctifies us by the Word. God sets us apart by the Word. And even those statistics prove it, doesn't it? People who spend time in the Word spend 63% drop in pornography. Can you imagine that? Okay, so God's Word is the truth. And Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth as you read and study the Word. So let me show you how you can apply the SOAP method of studying the Word of God. So the first one is the S, is the Scripture. Okay, so... I say to you, you need to have a Bible reading plan. Now you have this Bible reading plan, so what do you do? You start reading this Bible re according to this Bible reading plan. And then what happens is, is while you're reading, something is going to happen. The author of the Word of God, Holy Spirit, is there. And because He's there, you know, and if you've ever encountered this, you can say Amen. When you read that, all of a sudden a scripture jumps off the pages to you. All of a sudden, Holy Spirit illuminates a scripture. Okay? That's because you're not read, just reading a book. You're reading the Word of God. You're reading the inspired Word of God. So that scripture is going to jump from the pages to you. So when that happens, guess what? God is trying to speak to you. Okay? He's trying to bring something to your attention. So what do you do when that happens? You write it down. Okay, and that's the first part of this, the scripture. You write the scripture down. Okay, so um, let me ask you this. If you would get an important message from someone, wouldn't you pay attention to it? 
Of course you would. If someone was important to you and they shared a message with you, you would take serious note of that message. If I have a message of someone important, I would write it down because I don't want to get the message wrong. You know, it's like this telephone game. How many of you have ever played that game, telephone? Okay, you remember when someone starts with a message? Okay, you hold hands and you share that message in the first person's ear, in the second person's ear, the third person, the fourth person. When it comes to the last person, everyone's what, forgotten what the message was. Okay? It's because we didn't take serious note of the message. The same with the Word of God. If you don't write it down, you're going to forget that message. Okay? So write it down, the Scripture. Okay? Then the second step is you do observation. Observation. Okay? Now this is what you observe of that Scripture. So you write that verse and you read it again. And then you ask yourself the following questions. What do I think about this verse? Okay, what is this verse showing me? What is God revealing to me through this verse? What is God trying to reveal to me through this verse? Do any of the words stand out to you? Do any of the words stand out to you? What is the passage about? Okay, listen to this. Sometimes people read into the Bible instead of letting the Bible speak to them. How many of you have done that? You read, you feel angry, and then you read the Bible, and then you see only thing that you see is murder, killing, destruction. Okay, we read into the Bible, but are you reading into the Bible, or are you allowing the Bible to speak to you? you see, the Bible needs to speak to us. We shouldn't speak into the Bible what we want it to say. Okay, so what does this verse say about God? Is there something that God is showing you about Himself? What response does God want from you? Okay, those are all questions that you can ask. And I put them on the screen there for that purpose so that you can write them down when you do your observation. And, you know, observation is only as good as questions. You need to ask questions. The more questions you ask, the better observation you can actually make. The, second, uh, the third thing then is application. Application. You see, this is the purpose of the word. Okay, Pastor Steph, one of Pastor Steph's favorite verses is, faith without works is dead. If we don't have works, the Bible is supposed to put us into works. We're not supposed to not do nothing with what we read. Okay, the Bible actually says if we are hearers only, we deceive ourselves. So we should put the word into application, into practice. So... This speaks to you as how you can apply the scripture to your life. Okay, so what does God want me to think? You know that God wants to change the way that we think. So maybe there's a thought, a way of thinking that you need to change. Okay, what does God want you to believe? Maybe there's something that you believe contrary about yourself than what the word of God says. Then you need to change what you believe. Sometimes what we believe is wrong. Okay, what does God want you to change? There are things that we need to change in our lives. What does God want you to do? And you can write the answers to these questions. You can actually write them down. And then the final part of this is prayer. Okay, it's prayer. And what you do is, is that you actually write down the prayer about what you are going to do with what you just learned from the Bible. Okay, so for instance, you can say thank you to God for speaking to you. Okay, speaking to you. You can pray for others that are going through the same thing that you've just read in that scripture. Maybe there's people in your life that are going through struggles. You know, God doesn't only just speak to you for you. Sometimes he speaks to you for other people, people that need encouragement. Okay, so then you do that. You pray for other people and you can ask them to, for God to help them with whatever they are doing. And you can even witness to someone based on what you just read. So, to just quickly illustrate this to you, I'm going to just show you how I would do something like this. So, the scripture that we read this morning was Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Okay, I'm not going to read it all again for the sake of time, but out of that portion, you know, when I was studying that passage, then it was this verse that I was speaking about that came to life for me. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. You see, so that scripture was the scripture that I 
wrote down. Okay, I wrote down that scripture and then I made some observations. Okay, out of this verse, I see one thing that Jesus applauded Martha for, uh, he applauded Mary for sitting at Jesus' feet and reading his word. Okay, I also saw that Martha was distracted. She was busy with a lot of things. She, she didn't focus on what she needed to focus on. But Jesus said one thing is important. So I noticed the one thing that Jesus said is very important. Then the application. So what I say, see from that is God is saying to me, I don't need to be concerned about many things. Uh, only one thing is needed. Okay, that was one of my observations. And I need to sit at Jesus' feet. I need to read his word. I need to have quiet time with God. I need to spend time with God. So to apply it to my life, what do I need to do? I need to make an appointment with God every single day and make sure I make time to sit at his feet and hear his word. Okay? See application. In the prayer, I would pray something like this. Lord, thank you for your word. Today I choose to make your word the most important thing in my life. Help me to spend time reading your word daily and to make time to hear what you say to me. Speak, Lord. I will listen in Jesus' name. So that is just basically the SOAP method of Bible study. Now, do you think if you would do that, you would get something out of that? Okay, so when you apply the SOAP Bible study method to your life, it will help us to do what Jesus told us to do, to do the one thing that is needed to sit at his feet to listen to his word and i believe if we spend time on the most important thing then the other things will take care of themselves can i have an amen let's pray father god i thank you for your word this morning i thank you that your word does not return void but it accomplishes what you desire and it will achieve the purpose for which you sent it I thank you, Father, that your word is powerful, that it is living, that it is active. And Father, my prayer for every single person in this place this morning is that they will take your word, that they will read your word, that they will study your word. Lord, that they will take this book that we call our Bible, this life-giving book, and that they will spend time in it, Lord, not because they have to, but because they want to. And Lord, I believe that the more time they spend in the word, the more they will want to. The more it will change their lives, the more it will transform their lives, and the more, like Jesus said, it will set them free because the truth sets us free. And Father, we thank you for that in the almighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I want to encourage you this week, spend time studying the Word of God. And don't just read through your Bible, study your Bible, it's going to change your life. Enjoy your week, God bless.